Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. A more than $10 million climate resilient school plant opens at Chozel. Government moves to ensure gender equality in its development plans for St. Lucia. An acclaimed jazz musician gives a nod of approval to the reconfigured St. Lucia Jazz Festival. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. The government of St. Lucia has delivered on two of its development goals for the island with the completion of one project. Government through the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has been focused on rehabilitating schools for improved learning conditions as well as ensuring the resilience of the structures to climate change and disasters. On Monday, 13th May, an official opening ceremony was held for the new blocks at Chozel Secondary School which meet those very goals. Here's Janelle Norville. The ultra-modern infrastructure meets international standards by being child-friendly, aesthetically pleasing, climate-resilient, and structured to provide the optimum learning environment to engender the best possible results from teachers and students. It has been internationally acclaimed as a world-class project. Designs for reconstruction of the blocks were commissioned following alarming vibrations witnessed by users after a strong earthquake in November 2007. It was then recommended that the blocks be reconstructed as opposed to retrofitting as this would be too costly. At the official opening of the blocks, Prime Minister Alan Shastney shared his vision with the students. We want you to be able to live in your community, to be with your family, and to have the ability to compete with anybody in the rest of the world right here from Choiseul. So the same internet access that you have here at school is our intentions to make sure that every household in St. Lucia is going to have access to the internet. It is our intention very soon to announce that we're going to have an iPad program that your school books will be downloaded on that iPad, so you're not going to have to buy school books anymore. In keeping with the DVRP's goal of building national climate resilience, the following climate smart features are integrated in the buildings. A 25-kilowatt roof-mounted photovoltaic system, a rainwater harvesting system featuring a 20,000-gallon water tank, water-efficient toilets, and hurricane-proof windows and roofs. The buildings house approximately 650 students, 294 males, and 301 females and 51 teachers, and include, among other modern trappings, a sick bay, learning resource room, technical drawing laboratory, electronic document preparation management laboratory, music and theater art rooms, chemistry and physics laboratories, and access for the physically challenged to accommodate students and the wider community. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Michelle Charles, challenged the students and teachers of the school to use their new resources to their advantage. The eyes of the nation are now focused on the Choiselle Secondary School. It means, therefore, that with better facilities and increased resources, a commensurate improvement in performance is anticipated. After all, we all know that there is a strong correlation between the learning environment and the student's success. Hence, the expectation isn't unfounded. I challenge the principals, teachers, and students to examine the current state of play and develop strategies that will allow for a realignment and transformation of instruction and learning at the Schwizel Secondary School. The reconstructed blocks are also designed to cater for earthquake risk and can serve as emergency shelters during natural disasters. Constructed within budget, the total project value, including construction, supervision services, and supply of furniture and equipment, all locally sourced, was $10,123,734 EC dollars. Parliamentary Representative for Shuzel Saltibus, Bradley Felix, expressed gratitude for the government's efforts. He indicated, however, the work is only just beginning. We have some of the most renovations 
And I'm saying that very loud, and I'm looking in the minister's direction because I have indicated to her, you know, to ensure that she will get its fair share of that wallet this year. But it's not just schools. Our health centers, and I'm very happy to say that this year, Shuzel actually has three health centers give, being given complete renovation works. You know, so we recognize the importance of ensuring that our public buildings have a proper maintenance schedule. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. But what we need to recognize is this government's thrust into ensuring that public buildings get the required maintenance that is necessary. The DVRP provides access to special financing for households and businesses to implement resiliency measures for the Climate Adaptation Financing Facility, CAF, disbursed by the St. Lucia Development Bank. Projects still to come on stream include the Miku Secondary School and Wellness Center, Vole Culvert Crossing, PI Bridge and Community Centers at Bexor, PI, Blusher and Marcus Garvey. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Meantime, efforts at ensuring that health is part of the climate change agenda in the Caribbean region is being undertaken as the third Global Conference on Health and Climate Change Report was officially launched recently. More on this report from Fennel Neptune. The presentation of the third Global Conference on Health and Climate Change Report is expected to provide the government with recommendations on how to maximize the health benefits of tackling climate change. The Pan American Health Organization PAHO Director Dr. Carissa Etienne says it is important that small island developing states take action to protect lives from the impacts of climate change. Climate change is costing us lives. It's taking lives, not only in the Caribbean, but far, far, far beyond the Caribbean as well. It is harming health. It is threatening livelihoods and hindering development. And it is no wonder that Britain decla declared a climate emergency. And I hope that the heads of states of the Caribbean will also declare a climate emergency for the Caribbean. PAHO or WHO representative for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Dr. Godfrey Schreb, believes the Prime Minister of St. Lucia will be a great voice to advance the action plan for health and climate change in the small island developing states. St. Lucia is one of the leaders in the climate change revolution that is happening within the Caribbean, but also Prime Minister of St. Lucia takes on an important role next month when he becomes the head lead of CARICOM and we hope that he will be the political vehicle within the heads of government for this document. Grenada's Minister for Health, the Honorable Nicholas Steele, thanked the Pan American Health Organizations for its support towards the Action Plan for Health and Climate Change, which he believes will assist the region with becoming more climate resilient and protecting the future. PAHO and other high-level officials also got the opportunity to tour the Comfort Bay residence for the elderly facility, which is being retrofitted under the Smart Healthcare Facilities Project. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Phenel Neptune. A team of experts on gender mainstreaming has ended an inception mission here, as the government moves to ensure gender equality in its plans and strategies for St. Lucia's development. The mainstreaming gender equality in St. Lucia's National Sustainable Development Plan project was conceptualized in 2011 after a country assessment was conducted by the Caribbean Development Bank. The project aims to address some of the deficiencies that were highlighted in that assessment, among them gender imbalances, poor educational achievement for men, inadequate employment and training, and high incidences of single parents. The Caribbean Development Bank gave a grant to the government of St. Lucia of 115,000 U.S. dollars to start the project in 2014, but that was halted and resumed in 2017. Dr. Claudia Louis is the project coordinator. If we look at how many of the ministries and departments, they probably implement programs, gender is not given the type of priority 
that it deserves. It, in many cases, it's left to happenstance. If we have a program, whoever constituency it addresses, whether male or female, but they are not specifically any policies to indicate whether any of the genders, whether males or females, are being disadvantaged. What the gender mainstreaming project does, it allows the government to systematically address the gender inequality. And by that I mean every ministry and department and agency of government implementing a program will have to have gender planning as a foremost part of that project or any project or program that is being implemented. Partnering with the Caribbean Development Bank and the government of St. Lucia is Niagara College, who emerged successful from three proposals considered from the shortlisted firms for this consultancy. So collecting data, um, having information about who our clients are is important for our planning processes and um, that's, uh, that's a key part in terms of uh, gender planning and, and gender analysis. Uh, so we, see, we seek to support leaders and planners with knowledge and skills to practice gender planning in their work, aligned with national frameworks and data indicators that roll up to the, to the global standard for gender equality and sustainable development. The Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, the Honourable Dr. Gail Rigobert, says the initiative is not just about women, but for men. We understand that development uh, policies serve as the prescription for ensuring that there is a, a social and economic advancement. We recognize that if we do not take into account the concerns of both men and women in crafting development policies, we may very well end up with some lopsided policies or policies that remain silent on some of the concerns that we have had for a little while now. The team of experts were in St. Lucia for their inception mission from May 6 to 10, 2019 where they engaged in training exercises for officers of the Department of Gender Relations and public servants in various ministries, departments and agencies on gender analysis and gender inclusion in development planning. The reconfiguration of St. Lucia Jazz has been hailed as the best move for the island, as tourism officials continue to find ways in which to differentiate St. Lucia as a destination. The nod of approval comes from an acclaimed jazz musician. Anissa Antoine tells us more. New venues and the finest names in modern jazz were featured in the 2019 St. Lucia Jazz Festival, produced in collaboration with Jazz at Lincoln Center. Now in its 28th year, the St. Lucia Jazz Festival is the Caribbean's longest-running music celebration. Miniva Ross, Public Relations Officer at Events Company St. Lucia, stated that the company remains committed to the development of St. Lucia's brand. We feel that we're owning the brand St. Lucia Jazz Festival. Um, and it's, it's really amazing that it's gone in that direction. I like to think perhaps if someone made you an absolutely beautiful meal and they took that plate and they slapped onto it a dessert, a main course, and, a, and, a, and an appetizer, you would probably get at some point a little confused about what exactly you're having. What we've done in fact now is we've isolated those and you have the, the, the St. Lucia Summer Festival throughout the year um, with various courses. The festival featured Arturo Tapin, a world-renowned smooth jazz and reggae saxophonist from Barbados. Tapin gave raved reviews on the new venues and the lineup of this year's jazz festival. Before you used to bring a lot of R&B acts and pop acts and you'll get thousands and thousands of people. These smaller venues are lovely, they're intimate and I just hope it all works out well because I really enjoy the acts that you've invited here this year. Ten of the 25 performing jazz acts originated from St. Lucia. The St. Lucia School of Music, for the first time, headlined a jazz event. One of St. Lucia's most prolific artists, Ronald Bohingson, who expressed his support for the new direction of the festival, has for many years been assisting young talents. I, 
I, I pay attention to young people and um, I nurture them and they benefit from from my stature and my network and, and the songs I can write for them and give them free access to my recording studio but I benefit from from the new ideas that they bring you know? so it's it's a mutual thing and, and I listen to any kind of music I listen to all kinds of music I just did some then resegment with um, Migs and Invader is on that rhythm too. The St. Lucia Jazz Festival also featured artists in education initiatives, including master classes, professional development workshops, as well as performance collaborations with students. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there's hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome everyone to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. A campaign has been launched here to show the importance of sports to persons with disabilities. The Together We Can campaign is geared towards young leaders, prefects, student council members, peer members and advocacy groups to help erase the stigma pinned on persons with disabilities. Venicia Herman, a teacher of the Donata School, says she was inspired to implement the campaign following a recent course she attended in Japan. My experience in sports made it even more interesting to bring awareness of the benefits of sports for persons with disabilities. Watching persons with disabilities winning a race, taking part in sporting activities, surrounded by persons who influence in a positive way is inspiring. The joy of someone smiling and feeling accepted in society. That is how much sports can benefit persons with disabilities. Ms. Herman is of the opinion that more emphasis needs to be placed on persons with disabilities and sport. The continued development of female football at a grassroots level will hinge greatly on the sustainability of the current inter-district primary schools football event that's ongoing and being organized by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the Ministry of Education, and the St. Lucia Football Association. The preliminaries of the competition were held last week with matches in the Northern Zone held at the Saab Plain Field and the Southern Zone at the Philip Marsner Ground in Vieux All concerned parties were inspired by the successes of the initiative and look forward to the staging of the semi-finals and final of the competition when those dates are confirmed. And before we leave you today, some news of note. The Independence 40 Fund Day has been pushed back to May 26th at the Viafold Recreational Courts. There will be competitions for persons over 40 years of age in the sports of basketball, volleyball and netball. Preparations are well underway for the staging of the 2019 Winnet Island School Games. To this end, there will be the customary preparatory meeting in Dominica where the games will be held. The meeting is scheduled to take place next week and St. Lucia will be represented by Director of Sports Patrick Matre and School Sports Coordinator Isabel Alexander Markey. He is also reminding you 
that schools under 15 cricket gets underway on Wednesday at various venues. Teams will be playing in four groups before moving into the semi-finals and final stages. And that's your update on youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Integrity Commission is reminding all officials who have not filed declarations for the year ended December 31st, 2018, to do so immediately in accordance with Section 12.1 of the Integrity in Public Life, Chapter 1.19 of the revised edition of the Laws of St. Lucia. The Act requires that each person in public life file with the Integrity Commission a declaration of income, assets and liabilities for the year ending December 31st of each year. Financial year means any period of 12 months beginning on 1st January in any year. According to the Act, where a person fails to file a declaration, the Commission shall publish the facts in the Gazette and send the report to the Director of Public Prosecution for further action. The Act prescribes fines of up to $50,000 or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding five years or both for offenses, such as failure to file a declaration. All filing must be done before 31st May 2019. The Embassy of the Republic of Korea will host the first ever Korean cultural event, Seoul Beat Korea, in celebration of the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations between St. Lucia and the Republic of Korea on Wednesday, 15th May 2019 at 7 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Seoul Beat Korea will feature performances by the Korean Performing Arts Group and acclaimed acrobatic b-boy dance team. The embassy believes that Seoul Beat Korea will offer the people of St. Lucia an unforgettable evening to enjoy the unique beauty of Korean music and dance. Admission is free. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Kini tibi estene e ben touse, moun ki an bon sante oli wen ka wespiwe se vemin lan. Moun ki pani bon tepe waman kon sa kini maladi HIV, alcohol, kafime, ti mamay e gwa moun bien sansi pou se maladi sala. Moun ki ka touse ni pou pran pokosyon le yo an pami moun an plas piblik. Kouve bouchou le o ka estene e touse. Visite dokter e ben plas sante yo. Fini tout tretman yo ba ou pou sa jwen djewizon e pi maladi tibi. An responsabilite ou, ede dou bout si men Maladie TB et HIV. Protégez Kong et les autres. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Merci, Otan Nisha. Merci, Madame Department de Responsabilité pour l'information au gouvernement cette le GIS, à ce moment-là, Télévision Nationale puis à NTN, qui a posé au Nouvelle Arqueo, puis à Primus Hutchinson. Il y a une grande cérémonie pour ouvrir officiellement des blocs nouveaux à l'école secrète de Choisey. Ça a été fait hier. Le représentatif pour Choisey, Exaltibus, on y va Bradley Felix, déclare qu'il y a aussi l'avantage de Chambre Neuf Sala, c'est qu'il a placé l'école là dans une position qui est stable pour adresser cette situation de désastre. À présent, selon on y va Felix, même si la peine est un peu toujours. Mais à présent, la a une plus confiance de protection contre de mauvais désastres. On a fait l'exprimer qu'il remarque aussi que l'école est présentement plus avancée en ligne de computer et technologie, généralement. Il dit qu'il est plein et puis ça, l'école est capable de faire par les étudiants et de préparer au plus meilleur pour ce temps qui va venir. En parmi les autres officiers qui étaient présents dans la cérémonie, ça, là, c'était le ministre de l'Éducation, on est Dr. Gil Rigobert, ministre pour le Développement économique, on est Guy Joseph, et le premier ministre de cette ci on est Alain Chasney. Alors, il y a une autre nouvelle, nous allons pour plus à ce développement. Durant la troisième grande conférence de la Terre, à la santé et le changement de climat, un peu d'efforts est fait pour faire assurer que la santé est trouvée et acceptée en discussion concernant le changement de climat. En Rouge et Caraïbe. La grande conférence là, c'est poser pour tuer le gouvernement et puis recommandation à la meilleure façon pour trouver plus de bénéfices les venir pour le changement de climat. Directeur de l'organisation santé, ça c'est par où, Dr. Chris Etienne, a euh, raisonné qui est très important pour ce pays là qui a développé à la terre pour une bonne action pour protéger la vie peuple contre 
tracassement climat un représentatif pour PAO organisation de santé mondiale pour ce ce pays caraïbes là docteur Godfrey Zero pour cette opinion à qui qui premier ministre de ici c'est un c'est un c'est voir qui a porté plus d'assistance pour avancer plan d'action pour sortir le changement de climat pour ce pays là il déclare que le premier ministre honorable Alain Chasse pour contrôler l'organisation CARICOM donc moi il a ça poussé plus fort pour adresser situation ça là les officiers par eux et l'autre go quick de profiter l'occasion aussi pour visiter résident Comfort B ça c'est facilité pour les plus grands citoyens qui a trouvé euh logement à bas projet de facilité pour service santé comme ça Comfort B a trouvé à façade sous pays à vieux fort ministre de responsabilité pour culture honorable fortune belle rose bien satisfait puis manière spectacle jazz marché pour l'année ça là d'ailleurs commissaire et puis JAS du spectacle là madame belle rose vous marquez qui façon qui jazz hier l'année ça là ca ont fait l'occasion pour monde qui aime jazz amuser koyo plus mais il a ajouté qui des autorités organiser ce spectacle là à de façon principalement côté qui porter bon satisfaction pour tout qui participe ces places là nous cani jazz là yo pli yo pli petit et um 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 real sisters jazz la ka sorti you know ek se moun la ki really aime jazz se yo ki ka sorti ek yo ka patronize sa nou ka fè so nou kontan et puis sa nou ka wè ek um tout sa nou ka fè se pou assist et puis développer cette ici ek mwen kwè nou a sou kòs you know pou fè just just sa et puis um et puis jazz la ek se konsa nou a trois bout nouvel la nou ka mwen se ou tan pou gade mon ka bay invitasyon pou jwenn epi mwen ankò si di konseve la vi le mon ka pose tout lòt nouvel la koyòl apresan nou ka vie epi nichan merci on pale primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise skies are fair becoming cloudy at times with a few showers the atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the eastern caribbean region during the next few days Low level clouds moving along the wind flow will bring a few scattered showers over the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Tides for Castries Harbor high at 12:28 p.m., low at 6:13 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay high at 1:35 p.m., low at 7:40 p.m. Seas moderate to locally rough with waves and northeasterly swells of 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5:37 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Saint Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.